But you said before you felt your marriage was insecure. Why? Yes. Um, what like, do you mean? Like everybody else, you think that once you have this husband, he will make you feel like everything is going to be okay. There's nothing to worry about. You are together. And I think we all have that something we want to lean on that would not fall down, that we could completely lean on and will not move. But I found out that that was not the case. My husband was not something for me to lean on. He was a person on his own. He had his, he, he was an individual. And I couldn't do that to him. It was wrong of me to do that, to, of me to expect that. And so that's how I thought it was uh, insecure, because I was trying to, I guess, use him for my security, my insecurity. And what do you learn from that? Um, I learned that what I thought would be absolutely good for me turned out that it was not. So then I started looking again. At the time I was thinking that my husband was everything. If I lost him I thought it would be the end of the world and I would be in such darkness. But I had to accept the fact that he's not this something that I'm looking for and he could go away at any time. He is not what do you say? It was a commitment. Marriage was a commitment, but he was not committed to me. And I don't think... It's hard to explain. Okay. Yeah. We talk about now the marriage. Yes. Okay. And the meaning of insecurity yeah. in marriage. Yeah. But before that, you talk about New York job. Yes. Now, how we link between both of them. Now you are married. Yes. You have a job. Yes. You're insecure. Yeah. Okay, because you felt your husband is not faithful to you mm -hmm. somehow, mm -hmm. and you cannot lean on him. Mm -hmm. And now you see the different people. Yes. With all kind of problem. Yes. Okay. Now tell us your journey internal. Okay. Um. So that was a wake-up call. I looked at myself, I had, if, if the people I work for, my, my clients, um, they were also mentally ill as well. If they looked at me, they, I looked like I had the perfect life. They look at my husband, he's good looking. He's, for the most part, he's very sweet. He's a very decent man. And I was young, I was healthy, I had a pretty good salary, but, um, but I was not the, I wasn't having the perfect life. And on the other hand, when I looked at my clients, they looked more like um, independent to me. Like for me, I needed something, I needed somebody. But they were alone, very lonely, but, so I thought maybe this, this thing about God has something to do with their, their independence. Where are you now? Okay, you're stuck in life, you feel you have this lonely inside, you compare between your life and them, and you said, you are not satisfied or you are not completely uh, happy about your life? At all. At all. Mm -hmm. Why? I, I really didn't know why. Because I, I guess now when I look back, it was the connection with the Creator. Mm -hmm. Now that I look back. But at the time, I didn't know what it was. Mm -hmm. Still, I thought they were crazy to think that there is God. I mean, I didn't deny, I didn't reject their thinking, but I, I didn't believe in, in God at the time. I thought it was just their, their saying. But I, somehow I was, like, I did envy them for, they ha when they spoke about, mentioned God, they looked happy. 
and they had a bright face at the time. Yeah. And also uh, around this time is when I was when I was starting to think about the uh, injustices of the world, the oppression of the world and all these questions in life, why life is appears so unfair. And I was definitely searching for an answer. I was wondering if there could be happiness for everybody, if there could if peace was possible. And interestingly at this time I was starting to know about the the Arabic culture. I met um Egyptian man. He was selling coffee and donuts near my job. And and also he did mention God a lot. He says Allah and he told me that in Arabic Allah means God. The Christians say Allah and the Jew the Arabic Jews say Allah as well. So it just it means God the creator. And the way he described God was with conviction. Like as if he's a real being and that struck me. For example, he would say Okay, uh, I will see you tomorrow, inshallah. And I didn't know what that meant, inshallah. And he told me it means if God wills. And he told me if God wills, we will see. But if he doesn't will, we will not see each other tomorrow. And I didn't understand it at the time. I was pretty like offended in a way because I thought, why does God have to do with us seeing each other tomorrow? So at the time I didn't understand it, but his conviction did affect me that he believed really strongly that with no doubt he knew there was a creator he knew this being so that kind of made me interested about what is islam and, and and but i was i was going through different things and at the time also i was interested in the arabic music there was a singer named Amr, I don't remember, but I was looking for some Arabic music tapes and I went to a, an area in Brooklyn called Atlantic Avenue. I went to one bookstore and I asked for a music tape and uh, the, the shop owner said, we don't have this kind of thing, but we have this also, this Islamic books. And I said, oh, Islam, that's also the thing that the other Egyptian guy was talking about, so let me look at it. So that's how I, I looked into um, uh, looked into some of the Islamic books. Yes. That's where you went from music. Yes. And you end up with an Isl Islamic books. books, Quran and everything, mm -hmm. cassette and everything. And um, yeah, because for me it was just part of the Arabic culture that I was interested in. Mm -hmm. I thought, let me look at it. Mm -hmm. yeah. And and. One thing that hit me was the people in the store were very friendly. There was the shop owner and there were some other customers. They seemed very helpful to me and I never seen people like that before. They were generous, they seemed caring and I felt like like brother and sister. I I mean they were like they looked like Arabs and with strange costumes, but I felt comfortable. So so when I went back home, I remembered them. I remembered that they were good people. Yeah. And then, okay, I forgot how. Somehow, I got um, a phone number from one lady. She was a Muslim. Um, and, oh no, no, she called me. She called me one night. And she told me, I heard that you went to a bookstore and I have your phone number. Can I talk to you? So this lady started to talk to me about Islam. It was very unexpected because I wasn't really looking for Islam. I did buy the stuff, but I wasn't really taking it seriously. I just thought it was part of my collection of Arab cultures. And what she told me was, um, like, shocking to me, but it was a very natural... Uh, uh, story she was telling me. Uh, practically she was inviting me to Islam and the first thing she told me was that 
There are many things in life that people like to recommend to each other. For example, a man, there's a good man for you, I, he might be good for you. Or there's a good restaurant, maybe you might like this place. Or like a movie, there's a movie out there, It's I like to try to go see it. But there's nothing in life where we can say 100% we can, you will like it, it's good for you. But this lady told me strongly that Islam is 100% good for you. You must take it. So she started to tell me about it. And the one thing, the first thing that uh, clicked me was the word Islam. It means uh, surrender, submission. Islam means uh, submission of your will to God's will.